it is top five time again, which means I've got the best five stories of the whole gaming week all ready to go for you. Here's the important stuff. First up, the 2014 Game Awards are happening shortly and the nominees have been revealed. There's a heck of a lot of categories, but the games in the running for Game of the Year are Bayonetta 2, Dark Souls 2, Dragon Age Inquisition, Hearthstone and Middle Earth Shadow of Mordor. On top of that, Nintendo turned out to be the most nominated publisher, with 12 entries all up. Nominees were picked by a jury of 28 international media, but let me know who gets your vote. Highly anticipated Space Flight Sim Elite Dangerous is making some people unhappy this week by announcing that it is dropping its offline mode. The mode was promised in its Kickstarter campaign but has since been abandoned due to the need to curate and evolve the galaxy, according to Frontier Development CEO David Braben. Executive producer Michael Brook adds, The problem is that the galaxy mechanics all sit on the online servers. The data set and processes are huge and not something that would translate offline without considerable compromise to the vision. There's also been a bit of a problem since while refunds were offered, those who played the alpha or beta can't get their money back, since presumably their participation meant that they had an internet connection. More screenshots and info from Bloodborne have landed in our lives this week, and here's the new stuff we've learned about From Software's upcoming creation. We got a look at a new character called Gula, who is described as an old veteran hunter who's said to possess amazing skill. And there's also a glimpse of a location known as Kanehurst Castle. In regard to this one, producer Masaki Yamagiwa teased what happened to the family that ruled this castle for many generations. What secrets and what Dangers await you there. The dev also highlighted a weapon called the Transforming Cane, which is a sword disguised as a walking stick that also transforms into a blade whip. In Super Weird Stories of the Week, which let's face it always seem to be the best stories, an artist wants to hang out in virtual reality for 28 days. Mark Farad is calling the project Seeing Eye and plans to wear a VR headset for 24 hours a day to see through someone else's eyes and into their life. Farad plans to be on display to an audience the whole time, in a space that only consists of a bed, toilet and shower area. He's also asking for £150,000 on Kickstarter to go ahead with this, in order to pay people to keep him alive and functioning, to develop the technology to broadcast what the other the person is looking at and to fund a documentary about the whole thing. The campaign has currently raised £4,000. Visionary or weirdo? You decide. Nintendo of America President Reggie fils has said rather unsurprisingly that he thinks the Wii U is better than the Xbox One or the PS4. He's touting that the Wii U gives gamers the best value, with popular exclusives like Mario Kart 8 and Super Smash Bros. for Wii U. He went on to say that the console differentiates itself further with Amiibo support. fils explains, the good news for us is that we're presenting the best value right now in new home consoles. 299 bucks includes two games. It's a compelling proposition for consumers this holiday. Those two games are Super Mario 3D World and Nintendo Land, which come with the 32GB base Wii U model. As for your question of the day, let me know which console or bundle you reckon has the best value for money this holiday season and if you'll be picking one up. As always, thanks for hanging out this week. I'll be back with more news on Monday, but be sure to have yourselves a lovely weekend adventuring in Dragon Age Far Cry or whatever else you have going on.